It was late into the summer, and I'd accepted a job a few states away from my home. The job was that my friend needed help with a new construction project, and I was more than willing to oblige, seeing as he was promising good pay to do it. I was driving down the road for about three hours when I realized that I was lost. This wasn't the ideal situation, seeing as how not only was I going to be late getting to my friend's place, but I was also running out of gas. And that's when I saw something. In the distance, I could see buildings. It was strange. I didn't see a sign for anything for at least 10 miles back, but as I gained up on it, I could see that it was a whole town. Not a big one, mind you, but town still had gas stations, and it was starting to get pretty late. As I drove into the town, I could see some of the townsfolk stare at my car going by. I could tell they weren't expecting me or any visitors. I see some gas pumps and pull up by one of them and get out of my car. And that's when I was greeted by an older man. Hello there, son, he said with a friendly attitude. Hello. Um, I need some gas in my car. And is there a place I can stay the night around here? I didn't want to keep my friend waiting, but it was getting dark and I didn't want to drive tired. Besides, I still needed directions. Well, son, there's a motel right across from Town Hall. You'll find a map there that'll get you where you're going. The man finished pumping gas into my car and I paid him. I was about to thank him for his hospitality when he gave me a solemn look. Look, son, we don't mind visitors around here. But tonight is a festival and it's for locals only. Just stay in your motel room between 12 a.m. and sunrise and you'll be Jim Dandy. I acknowledged what he said and then began to drive off in the direction of the motel. It was a strange town, no mentioning of it on any map, and I'm pretty sure the town didn't even have a name. Of course, if it did, I already willingly forgot it just like everything else I try to forget about that wretched place. Driving around town, I couldn't help but notice something strange. Most small towns have churches on almost every corner. I assumed this was a traditional place and would be no exception, but I was wrong. There wasn't a single house of worship of any kind to be seen anywhere. I shrugged it off and pulled into the motel. The receptionist greeted me kindly. Welcome to the Black Tallow Inn, sir. It will be ten dollars for a room. The motel lobby, like the rest of the town, felt dated. The whole room seemed like it was straight out of the 30s, with a record player playing oldies music and old patterned furniture. I made my way up to my room, and it was humid. I cracked open a window, surprised there wasn't even any kind of air conditioning, just how outdated was this town anyway. I looked around the room and I noticed something when I opened the drawers. Maybe it was a coincidence, but no Bible. This place seemed like something out of a ghost story. I was half expecting to go out at 12 AM and see all the other townsfolk as ghosts. That would have been much easier to deal with than what I did see. Nighttime rolled around, and the time on my watch read 11.55 p.m. when I looked out the window to see the townsfolk walking off to a destination. Yes, I know I was told to wait in my room until sunrise, but it was so humid, and there was nothing else to do besides satiate my curiosity. So when I felt like no one was following me, I went outside, got in my car, and I drove off in the same direction they went, trying not to be seen. When I arrived at the destination, I lagged behind to see that only a few people had cars and the others walked. Knowing this, my car would make me stand out, so I left it behind and walked the rest of the short distance. I was careful that no one saw me, for fear that there'd be some type of punishment and that's when I saw a large rock overseeing the cliffs below where the townspeople were gathering. They all walked down some stairs carved into the side of a cliff until they were on the beach below gathering around the sea. I got under the rock by the cliff to get a bird's eye view while still staying out of sight. I could see the ocean, the townspeople, and the sky, and that's when I noticed the sky was different. There were more stars. They were of different assortments and colors. 
The townsfolk had no flashlight or torches, but the sky illuminated everything. That's when below, I saw a man who I assumed was the mayor of the town stand in front of the crowd ready to give a speech. He then gave the speech in a language I didn't understand. There wasn't even another language to compare it to. That's when the others joined in, beginning to chant something in unison. When the chanting stopped, a roar tore through the sky, and the stars above began to spin and shift like a planetarium dome. That's when it emerged from the waters. I say it because whatever it was cannot be described by words. My brain couldn't process any of it. Its shape and color were unlike anything I'd ever seen. I wanted to say this was a dream, but there's no way my brain could make something like the Leviathan before me. Just looking at it triggered the same response one's brain has when trying to imagine death or a loss of conscious awareness. My mind screamed and rebelled against seeing the monster. My eyes stung like someone had thrown garlic powder in them. To avoid looking at the abomination any further, I looked down at the cultist and the sight was not much better. And that's when the monster did the unforgivable. And it spoke. The way it spoke insulted every sense of my body except my hearing. It felt like I could drift to sleep hearing the reverberating echoes of its whispers, which seemed to be everywhere at once. I couldn't stop listening, but my body felt like it was burning. And then the monster stopped speaking, and I looked down at the beach like I was a young child, and I watched the old man from the gas pumps and two young adult men and women as they marched into the ocean disappearing into the currents. That's when the creature spoke again, but only for a moment, and I looked down to see the townspeople staring up at me. Then they began to make their way up the stairs. It was time to leave. I turned around and I got the hell out of there. I ran faster than I ever thought possible, and I was in my car before I knew it. I drove away and I didn't stop until this town was in my rearview mirror and then a hundred miles more. I got to my friend's place about two hours later, and he told me I looked terrible. I tried to explain the situation to him, but he just looked confused. Yeah, there's uh, no town around here. It's this one and then the city five hours away. How could there be no town? I thought to myself. I'm writing this because it's the only way I can. I try to talk about that night, the cultist, and the monster, but all my words recollecting it fail and stutter. I tried writing down a description for it, but the paper just shrivels and rots. Whatever that thing was, it was something that doesn't belong in this reality, or maybe any reality for that matter, even as my mind tries to recollect it. I can feel its horrifically beautiful image slowly sinking into shadow and obscurity. Writing on this post seems to be the only method that's worked. So you have to believe me when I say that there are things that don't belong in this world and if you value your sanity, you'd do well to not seek them out. <laughs>